So something that we could all probably do a better job of is taking care of and tracking our mental health. And in this video, we'll take a look at a Docker container called Rediary that might help you do that pretty easily. But first, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by NordPass Business. In today's fast paced business world, security and efficiency are paramount. Introducing NordPass Business, the ultimate password management solution designed to streamline your organization's digital operations. You can try NordPass Business free for three months by going to nordpass.com slash dbtechnord with code dbtechnord. With NordPass Business, your team members can log into multiple platforms and services using a single click, boosting productivity and reducing frustration. Say goodbye to weak, easily guessable passwords. NordPass Business generates strong, unique passwords for each employee, fortifying your company's digital defenses. All passwords are securely encrypted and stored in a centralized vault, accessible only by authorized team members. You can see NordPass Business in action now with a three-month free trial at nordpass.com slash dbtechnord with code dbtechnord. So Rediary is a project from a dev called Aceberg, and we've actually looked at another project from Aceberg, uh, as they're the ones that developed the container Watch Your LAN. Now, if you like this project or even that Watch Your LAN project, be sure to head over to their GitHub repository and give that individual project or both projects a star. So let's take a look through Rediary, uh, talk about how it works, uh, talk a, a little bit about some of my thoughts, and then I'll show you how easy it is to deploy. Now, one thing to know is this is a single user application with no authentication on the app. So whatever you enter won't require a username or a password to view the entries. So I don't recommend putting this on a public domain or making it publicly available uh, anywhere outside your local network. So if any time during this video, you decide that this is a project that you would use in your home lab, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Or if it's something you would not use, I'd also be interested in why in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot to me if you gave this video a like. And if you're interested in this kind of content, don't forget to click the subscribe button. So with all of that out of the way, here we can see my demo server with a few entries in it already. In order to actually get to this point, there is a bit of setup and we will look into that. But first, let's take a look around this page. At the top left, we've got a logo and some basic navigation. And below that, we've got a calendar that shows us at a quick glance what our days have looked like. Now, I've chosen red and green for my negative and positive points respectively. The greener a day is, the better that day was. And of course, the redder the day is, the worse that day was. It's pretty simple overall. In the middle of the page, there's a place where we can go and enter a date, a predefined name, and then we can rate the day with the minus and plus sliders, and then click the add button. Below that, we can see the different entries for the current day, as well as net positive or negative endpoints for each entry, as well as the day itself. To the right, there's a word cloud for a quick visual representation of what is the most common entry in our diary. Overall, the homepage interface is pretty straightforward, but again, there's a bit of setup that has to be done to get to this point. So to make sense of that, let's head over to the config link in the menu at the top. On the config page, we can see that we can edit the database path, which in this case is a SQLite database. We can edit the host, the port, and the theme. Now there's not really much you need to do with the first three entries, but you can modify them as you see fit for your setup. Now the theme entry in this is kind of interesting as it lets us choose from a bunch of theme options that are available from bootswatch.com. You can check out any of the themes that you'd like to use and switch between them with just a couple of clicks. And once you've made the changes that you need to make, you can go ahead and click the save button. Now to the right of the basic option, there's a button that says clear table. Now, be careful with that button as it will clear all of your diary entries. Now, just a little side note here. I'd like to see a, a little pop-up message, a, a prompt that's like, are you sure you want to do this as it will erase all of your diary entries uh, just to help prevent deleting your entries without knowing what that button does. Below that is where you can select your minus and plus colors. Again, I chose red and green for those in my setup. Below that is where you'll build your tags and actions so that you can enter uh, what you did and the rating for those actions on the homepage. First, you'll choose your tag and color and then press add. 
Then you'll choose that tag under the actions side and then add an entry for that tag. You might have cleaning as a tag and then subcategorize it with house, car, studio, bathroom, or whatever your categorization needs are. Below the tags and actions, you can delete any of the categorization entries that you've got by selecting them and then clicking the delete button. So that's how we're going to build out our tags and actions. And now that we kind of have a better understanding of how to get the app configured, let's go ahead and take a look at the diary page. Now, by default, this will show us just the last week of entries, and you can use the selection options at the top to select month, all, or any specific date or date range. So once you've selected the view that you want, you'll see a full list of all of your entries with the date, tag, name, points, and the net result of the minus and plus entries. Then over to the right of that, you can see a visual representation of your entries with color bars. So overall, I think this is a very cool project, but I do have a couple of thoughts on it uh, that I would like to share with you you before we get into the actual deployment of this container. In the visual chart, I'd like to see the individual dates in that calendar link to the corresponding day under the link so that if you are on the home page and you want to see what happened on a date, you click it and then it takes you over to the diary page that has a list of all of the events available there. Uh, I'm not sure if that's possible with the way this application is currently built, but it's definitely something that I'd like to see. Also, when entering our date name minus plus uh, and all of that sort of stuff, I'd like to see uh, a text box with the ability to enter more details about that entry for future reference and reflection, you know, similar to what you might see over on uh, Mood Track Diary, which was reviewed on One Mine Cyber Guide. I'll have a link to all of that in the description, along with everything else, of course. Now, as far as deployment is concerned, it's really, really straightforward. You can use a Docker run command or a Docker compose in either command line or portainer, and any of these methods will get you the same end result. Now, if we take a look at the Docker Compose, we can see the version is set to three. And under services, we can see that the image is listed as aceberg slash rediary. So we're going to go through everything else below this real quick, but I wanted to make a quick note in that uh, the way this Docker Compose is currently uh, indented and, 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 and laid out is incorrect. It won't have a good end result. So I will have a link to my version of this linked in the description as well. So we've also got a restart policy if unless stopped, which is pretty standard for this kind of a thing. Basically, if your server reboots, it will automatically try to come back up unless you've gone in and told it to manually stop the container at some point. If you have told it to stop, uh, it won't automatically come back up because you told it not to. Now the ports entry is set to 8847, but you can change the first half of that to whatever you need it to be if you're already using that port for another container. Uh, just remember not to change the port uh, number over to the right side of the colon. The volumes entry is just where you're going to store the data for that app on your Docker server. Again, you can change the left side of the colon, but don't change anything on the right side. Lastly, we have the environment variables of time zone, database, host, port, and theme. Now be sure to change the time zone to match your location, uh, as this is the only of, of these options that you can't change in the application later on. So if you misconfigure something else, you can go back into the app and change it. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to your Docker Compose or your command line or whatever and redeploy it with the correct setting. So once you have these settings configured the way you need them, you can deploy the container using your preferred method. Again, whether it's command line or portainer or whatever the case is, whatever works best for your needs. And after just a couple of moments, you'll be up and running and you can start keeping track of your emotional resources. So again, please let me know in the comments if this is something that you would find helpful or not helpful for your needs. If you've got ideas for the project or run into any issues, you can head over to their GitHub repository and be part of the community over there as well. So with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But before I do, I just wanted to let you know that if you'd like to support the channel, you can uh, like and subscribe, or you can become a channel member, join my Patreon, or subscribe to DB Tech Top Fans and get access to my content with no ads. So anyway, with that said, thanks so much for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll chat with you in the next video.